He's at the School of Science and Math as a bridge between the school and the public. He loves straddling disparate worlds. Coming to us from Duke University, David Stein. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, no thank you for having me follow him. I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> that was a really great presentation. So let me just uh, run you through. Uh, you've been looking at a, a, a large scale. I'm going to take you down to a real micro scale. I work with eight schools. And our job is to play with uh, technology, play with it in schools, get teachers excited about it, and also to create a, a, a steady flow of students. We've converted a lot of Duke students into ed tech. And so they're now going out into the ed tech fields. And we'll give you some names. Uh, that'd be great. Um, so one of the things we're finding is that AI, AR, and animation are things that are really catching uh, people now. I'll just block you every once in a while. Um, so we're going to just tell you some of these things. And as has been mentioned before, you need three components to really make it work. Uh, Web-based, free, and intuitive. And the, the free thing was uh, great with what you're doing. Um, and it's ironic, but sometimes the hardest things to understand, like artificial intelligence, are really some of the easiest things to introduce to schools. And let me give you a couple of examples. This uh, number of you might be familiar with is just a simple drawing program, and you just draw and it guesses. Quick Draw is a game a few of us at Google made. You draw and the computer uses machine learning to guess what you're drawing. I see square, or suitcase, or canoe. Oh, I know, it's shoe. It's an experiment that uses some of the same technologies that helps Google translate, recognize your handwriting. To understand handwriting or drawings, you don't just look at what the person drew, you look at how they actually drew it. Which strokes did they make first? Which direction did they draw them in? You train the computer on millions of characters from hundreds of languages, and over time, it learns whether you wrote look or whether you wrote book. Training is a big part of how the computer can guess your drawings correctly. As people, it's easy for us to look at these three drawings and know they're all cats, but to a computer, they're very different. One is just a head one has a full body, and one is just facial features. To get the computer to understand, you have to show it a lot of cat doodles. And then it starts to see patterns. So some of the common elements, if an AI system is learning that, is that pointy ears, whiskers, and so all of those have a common element to it, and then the computer learns that. And we found that that works with everything from preschoolers and students with autism, all the way to people with dementia. So it's, it's been something that has cut across lots of different uh, demographics. Um, and then, all right, so you can just see it and appreciate it, but how do you get students actually using and experimenting and creating things with AI? And again, here's another example that we've had very good success with. With Teachable Machine, we set out to make it easier for anyone to create machine learning models without needing to write any machine learning code. When it first launched in 2017, it allowed everyone to get a feeling for what machine learning is all about. But now, Teachable Machine puts the power of machine learning in your hands, allowing you to save your models and use them in your own projects. So let's say you want to build a model. So it's really straightforward. So we work with and train kids so that they can choose, they, they want to distinguish between themselves and their brother. And so we were able to do a lot of this virtually, which was great during the pandemic. Um, and so, you know, they get to choose what they want and to start exploring and figuring out how it, how it works. Augmented reality is a personal favorite of mine, and I'd be happy to argue VR versus AR with people, but I'm a strong believer in AR. I don't think we want to be hiding. I'm sorry, Todd. But I, I'm, I don't think we want to just be hiding all the time behind glasses and you're not part of the environment. Here's just an example. You guys familiar with this one? You just take this little app and you take a dollar bill and you put women on it. And you get to choose the women and you learn a lot about the history uh, of women in, uh, uh, in the process. Um, we've done things with making books come alive. We just published a book on young activists and in it there's lots of graphics and each one of those graphics is a, is a trigger with videos and so you can really learn from that as well. And adding depth to public displays, I'll show you some of that, and library book teasers. But we first started like, much like Todd did, and we went through 30 different programs that are used for creating AR in schools, particularly 